Hi, I'm Cinda Howard with Fly Fish Arizona and Beyond. I'm a guide and instructor here in the White Mountains. And today we are on Big Lake, and we're going to teach you how to fish a lake with a fly rod. We couldn't have asked for a prettier day. When you're out fly fishing, you don't think about anything else. You're out with nature, you're forgetting your problems, and it's beautiful. You know, I always say trout do not live in ugly places. Coming in today, saw so many animals and wildlife, and it's just spectacular. This is Jules. She's a good fishing buddy. She likes to lick the fish. So we are at Big Lake, which is on the Apache Sitgreaves Forest Service. We just launched out of Railroad Cove and uh, we are on the hunt for some cutthroat today and probably some rainbows. When I look at this lake, it is vast and a lot of people come to Big Lake and they just don't know where to start. So what I'm looking for is I just want to cover a cove. So I'm going to pick a cove that I decide I want to fish and I'm going to start shallow and then I'm going to work my way deeper if we have to. I'm going to take my pair of forceps and I'm going to clamp them on my bottom fly. And I'm just going to drop them in the lake. Some people freak out over that. <laughs> so this is how I tell how deep I am. When they hit the bottom, I know that's my depth. So if you see where my indicator is, my indicator is actually a little too high on my line because we don't want our flies laying on the bottom, but we want this indicator to suspend them just a few inches above the bottom of the lake. We don't see a lot of fish surfacing, so we won't fish on top. So we're just going to cast down. If you notice, I'm casting towards the end of the lake, which would be towards the weed beds. And so these fish will cruise in and out of the weeds eating bugs because that's the majority of a trout's diet is bug life. I have two flies on. My first fly is a size 18 black and copper zebra midge. This is a go-to fly for me in lakes when I'm going to use a strike indicator and try to suspend some midges underneath the surface. And then I have a small, about a size 12, white woolly bugger. Now this fly may just work as an attractor. A lot of times the fish will see the brighter fly or the bigger fly, that will attract them, but then they'll eat the fly that looks a little bit more natural. So a lot of times on my top fly, it's a little bigger, it's a little brighter, it's something that's gonna catch their attention and then they'll go, whoa, look at that one under it because it looks more natural and that's the one they'll eat. Um, about a foot up the line, I am fishing a size four split shot. And then above that is my strike indicator, which is what we'll be paying attention to. I'm going to watch this indicator, and if it moves on, I'm going to set the hook. We're just going to lift. We're going to lift enough to pull all the slack out and hook the fish. And, um, you know, the way it is, is it's just a straight lift. You know, but this is a lot of just watching that indicator and seeing if it moves weird or goes under, anything strange happens, that's potentially our fish. I give it a little bit of bump, I um, mean, kind of a twitch. That twitch sometimes will initiate that strike. Sometimes when that bug just kind of does a little twitch in the water, that's what it takes to that fish to go, oh, that's something real, I think I'm gonna eat that. And so it just kind of gets them to have that little predatory instinct and, and eat that fly. So it's just letting the wind take it and twitching it every once in a while. So the first thing that I do when I'm not catching fish is I just change flies rather than changing depth. And this fly is called a semi-seal leech. It's uh, the blood leech color. That's fish. All right, got one on. So when I find this fish, I'm keeping my rod tip all the way pointed at the sky. I want this rod to absorb all the pressure of the fish. And let's see if we can get around this oar. Get him in the net. And it's one of the beautiful cutthroat that Arizona Game and Fish put in this lake. We'll throw our flies back out. We'll give him a little drink of water. Always wet your hands before you hold a fish. 
so you don't absorb their protective coating. There's a beauty. And how you tell it's a cutthroat, you see that little orange cut under his, under his mouth, under his lip? That's your cutthroat marking. All right, now we just give him a drink of water, let him swim off. We're going to change up the way we're fishing just to demonstrate a different way to catch fish when you're fly fishing, especially in a lake like this. And we just caught that beautiful cutthroat on this uh, blood leech color semi seal leech, so I put it back on. We're going to cast out, and now I'm just going to let the fly sink. And I'm gonna start with a 10 second count. You know, I want my fly to sink down, but if I catch a fish, I wanna know how deep I was when I caught it. So that 10 count, uh, if I were to catch a fish, that's where I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna keep counting to 10 every time I cast. If I don't catch a fish on the 10 count, I'll go to a 15 count. So when I cast the fly out, I've let it sink. Important things when we move a fly through the water is now I'm going based off of fill. A moment ago, we were watching a strike indicator. Now, I'm going to feel the hit. So I want my rod tip all the way down in the water. And I'm just stripping this fly through the line through my hand. Now, we do things like we vary our strips. Some fish want it fast, sometimes they want it slow. And so I usually start with a kind of medium speed strip, right? It's a strip strip, I pause strip some more, pause again. There should never be any hesitation between you feeling the fish and you setting the hook. The same with the strike indicator. As soon as you see that thing move, you want to set the hook because as soon as that fish realizes, I've just made a huge mistake, it's going to spit it out. We have hundreds of trout lakes, and then if you start talking about bluegill love D to fly and bass love D to fly, there's so much you can do with a fly rod in Arizona.